welcome to Bridge Connection today. Glad you're with me. We've been going through the Gospel of John. Uh, my desire, my goal, my purpose is that each one of us would get a just kind of a fresh revelation of Jesus. Just that we, as we're reading this Gospel, we might see him in fresh new ways and, and uh, just to make him known and to be known unto him and and to just uh, experience some things and hear some things he says and watch some things he does and um, just how we could apply those things to our lives that this would be more than just a history lesson. Jesus did this and this is what the disciples did. I just, I, I want us, we're gonna talk about that stuff, but I want us to really experience Jesus as we as we go through this uh, this particular part of the gospel. So if you would, uh, Bear with me, let's uh, let's pray before we start, okay? Our Father, as we sit before you this day, we ask as we open your word and begin to study and look that we would oh, see you, hear you. Um, maybe you'd show us things in your word as we're going through that would change our lives, that would change our perspective, that we'd hear guidance, we'd... Uh, Hear you speaking to us, Lord. You know, uh, you told us in your word, the words you speak, they are spirit and they are life. So Lord, as we read your word, we're, we're just gonna be a little more alive because your words are life. So God, we just want to be a little more alive in you this day as we approach your word and ask you to show us the things that you want us to know. And Lord, it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Hey, we're going to start with verse 35. If you have your Bibles, you can uh, read along, follow along with us, okay? John chapter 1, verse 35. Again the next day, John stood with two of his disciples. And looking at Jesus as he has walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Now let's just stop there. One of these disciples is Andrew. We don't know that yet for several verses, but I'm gonna just clue you in, give you a little secret, it's Andrew, okay? His experience was very, very simple. Somewhat like the experience of many who come to Christ. Andrew just hung out, he stood where preaching was, where teaching was. Notice the word stood. John had been holding his campaign, the John the Baptist, you know, around the Jordan and 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 just been standing there. He had an ache, obviously, for the word of God. He had become interested in what was happening and had attended the teachings and the meetings. And at some point, we're told that he became a follower of John the Baptist and was one of his disciples. The point to see is that Andrew hungered for righteousness. So he availed himself of the opportunity to hear teaching about that. He stood right in the midst of the teaching. He was there when the, when, the, when the proclamation of the Messiah came, when John said, behold, the Lamb of God. Andrew heard that. He was listening to the message, not allowing his mind to just kind of ramble anywhere. He was alert, he was awake. Therefore, when the announcement of the Messiah came, he was ready, ready for this message. Behold, the Lamb of God. You know, it was a message of the Messiah's sacrificial death. The lamb, the lamb without blemish. She said, behold the lamb. Andrew followed Jesus, it says. The word followed is in the Greek in the aorist tense, meaning a once for all act. Andrew was turning to Jesus, ready to make a commitment to him. He wanted to become a disciple of Jesus. You know, all you need to do is hang around things of God and Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. John 20, 10, 27. John the Baptist, interesting guy. He had one message. His message was Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He had one purpose and that one purpose was to point people, even his own followers, those who were coming to hear what he had, had to say, he wanted people to be where they would receive and grow the most. So he just kept pointing them to Jesus. His spirit was filled with enormous humility. 
He was completely selfless. He, he pointed his own followers to Jesus Christ and go, go follow him. He has the answers. I love that. It says in First Peter chapter 1, verse 18, it says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So we know that we were saved because of Jesus only. Verse 37, back in John chapter 1. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and seeing them following, said to them, What do you speak? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say when translated teacher, Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. And it was about the 10th hour. We're now going to continue to watch Andrew. It's a most graphic picture. It shows the great eagerness of Jesus to, to reach people. I love this, man. Jesus longs for people to come to him. He longs to reach out to to them and, and in their coming. Um, Jesus was walking some distance away and Andrew and his friend were following behind Jesus. And Jesus did three things that just demonstrates his, his great eagerness. It says, Jesus faced, he turned to face him. Jesus turned to face him. A clear demonstration of his open arms, his willingness and his eagerness for them to join him. He knew their hearts had just been stirred to reach out to him and to follow him. So he immediately spun, I picture him spinning around, you can snap around whatever you want to help them and say, come and follow. And Jesus asked the basic question of life. What do you seek? Now notice this, he didn't say, who do you seek? Or what do you seek? But what are you after? Questions like, are you seeking meaning, purpose, and significance in life? Are you seeking a religious self-improvement and, and human development program? Are you seeking rules and regulations and laws of righteousness? Are you seeking fellowship and companionship? Maybe you're seeking deliverance from trials and trouble and suffering. Maybe you're seeking approval and acceptance of God. What are you seeking? Maybe you're seeking blessings from God, he says. He's not saying this, but these are the questions that are going in their minds of his care and his security. Notice what Andrew and his friend ask. They said, Rabbi, where are you staying? They'd never met Jesus before, yet they called him master, teacher, rabbi acknowledging his position as, as the authority, as their teacher. They weren't asking for a simple conversation by the side of the road. Now, how do I do this? How do I do this? How will this work out? They were asking to join him in the quietness of where he was staying, to open and pour out their hearts to him and for him to become their, their teacher. They wanted him to meet their crying need of their, their heart and to do this in the, in the quietness of his dwelling where he was saying, don't you love the verse, Jeremiah 29, 13? And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search, when you shall search for me with all your heart. Memorize that one, Jeremiah 29, 13. So Jesus extended an invitation. He said, come and see. The invitation was immediate. It was while Andrew and his friend were, you know, seeking Jesus, they were invited to go and he sensed their need. And so he didn't postpone their request nor leaving them hanging. He said, Isaiah chapter one, verse 18, beautiful verse says, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, crimson, they shall be as wool. And I love Isaiah 55, one. Come, everyone that thirsts, come to the waters. And he that has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without honey and without price. 
hard to say these because he used to sing them in the King James Version when we first got saved. These scriptures were our songs. Revelation 22, 17. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that hears say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Just great scriptures. Picking it up, verse 39. He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Now it was about the 10th hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. So we finally get to the mystery of who it was. It was all Simon Peter's brother, Andrew. He was found the Lord before Peter did. He came and saw and he remained with Jesus. It says Andrew came to Jesus. He accepted the invitation. He walked up to Jesus and walked along with him in order to see just where Jesus did dwell. See, Andrew had to accept the invitation. He said, come, and Jesus, Jesus did, and Andrew had to, had to follow. Andrew had to be willing to see where Jesus would, would, would dwelt and, and, and to let Jesus lead him to his dwelling place. Come and see. I love that. Come and see. He was talking about seeing the truth and learning of him. Andrew was being assured if he would just come that, that he would most definitely see and learn the truth of life. The Lord guaranteed it. Second Corinthians 4, 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Well, anyway, Andrew and his friend remained with him, that is, by Jesus' side in his presence. They received of him and he met their needs. Notice the significant thing here. This confrontation with Jesus changed their lives forever. Listen to this. This is seen in that the very hour is still remembered. 50 or more years later, Andrew and his friend committed their lives to Jesus. Now, John quotes the very time they had to talk about it constantly, how they met Jesus this very hour. Look at verse 41, okay? He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. So Andrew's primary concern is, first, was, first concern was brother Peter. This scene was striking. Immediately, as quickly as he could, after discovering Jesus for himself, Andrew rushed to find his own brother, Simon. Andrew had met Jesus personally, and Jesus had met the crying need of his heart. Andrew could not contain the peace and the joy. He had to tell his loved ones immediately. They had to share in this. He wanted them also to experience the love and the, and the peace of Jesus Christ. Andrew was a great witness, a great personal worker for the Lord. He was always seen bringing someone to Jesus. Look at John 6, 8, John 12, 22. He was always doing that. In verse 42, and he brought him to Jesus. Now, when Jesus looked at him, he said, you are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. Notice the words, you're going to be called, you shall be called. They refer to the future. Simon's name would be changed to Cephas. That was a prediction that he would be converted and he would be changed from a self-centered, defensive, overbearing, and carnal man into a strong, solid, immovable, and unbreakable rock for God. Notice a couple of facts here. Jesus beholds a man, studies and knows him instantly, knew all about him. See, Jesus sees the potential within every one of us, even those that haven't come to him yet, he, and he longs to change that man to make him everything he can become. Jesus wants you to become everything, everything that he has designed for you. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, 
He is a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. Second Corinthians 5.17. As I've been reading this and trying to figure out how to share this and, and talk about this and look at this picture of just the excitement of these men when they found Jesus. You know, I, I remember the, the night I gave my life to Jesus. I, 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 I was in a, an old church, it was an open Bible church it was called in Pico Rivera, California. And uh, the pastor had an altar call and I, I almost ran to the altar, man. I was ready, he, he talked on giving that night. He talked on stewardship. It wasn't even on salvation, but my heart was ready. I, I knew I was gonna go to church that night and I was gonna, I was gonna give my life to Jesus because he'd been dealing with me for a long time. He'd been dealing with me through the stuff in my life that wasn't supposed to be there. And my life, my wife who was living a, a, a life of Jesus without my involvement and she would continue to pray for me and share with me and I would go to church with her all the time and um, people were sharing with me, you know, her, her brother who I worked for, he introduced us together and I worked for him for a long time before I'd left there and, and he, was, he was a strong man of God and he was always sharing with me and praying for me and there were just so many people in my life were praying for me. My mom never stopped praying for me. And my dad had gotten saved by then, and he was an incredible man of God. Once he got saved, the Lord changed him 100%, man. And uh, he became a man of God, got up every day and read through the Bible, read through the, went through the, not every day he would read, but he'd go through the Bible every year and he'd read it out loud so my mom could hear and enjoy it. And after she passed away, he continued until he died to read through the Bible every day and read it out loud. And uh, he was praying for me. And so that night I, I almost ran down the altar and ran down to the altar and gave my life to Jesus. I, I probably prayed there for a long, long time. And I realized, and I remember that night when I went home, I was so overwhelmed. I was so filled with a, with a joy and a peace. And a, I knew that I'd met Jesus. I'd, I'd heard about him, I'd talked about him, I'd prayed to him but there was never a relationship. I'd never invited him into my life. And I invited him into my life and I couldn't sleep that night. And the next day I'm singing songs to the top of my voice as I driving the driving the truck at that time and just doing what I was doing. And But I was rejoicing and uh, the songs I had, the little choruses I knew as I'd gone to church, you know, with my mom as I was growing up and with my wife after we got married and I knew the some of the courses and I was singing those and every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before and songs you guys didn't watch, a lot of you watching don't have any idea. Some of you, some of you remember those songs and uh, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me and just so many. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back and, and I meant those things and, and I was reading this to, today and, and thinking about you know, Andrew and whoever else was with him and, and then Peter and how there was just this, this change. And I was thinking, you know, Lord, I love you and I'm excited about you and I'm, I'm, I'm having a good walk with you right now over the last several months. And, you know, I'm going through the grief of losing, losing my best friend, my wife, and, and it's been almost two years now and I'm still grieving every day. And but it's better and it gets easier to walk with him. And there's a fresh, renewed relationship with him. And, and it's, it's been just so real, so real to me. And, and I, I just kind of want to, I want to be that kind of guy. I want to be that kind of guy that, I'm not there yet, but I'm, I'm praying about it. And it's getting better. I want to take Jesus every place I go. I want Jesus to, and we should all be doing this. Every place, every, every place we walk into, Jesus, he is there. He resides here by his spirit. And we just need to be in the business of taking Jesus every place we go. You know, everything that we're involved with, 
Jesus is with us. And when we have a word to speak, we need to speak it. When we have, a, 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 you know, a, a word to say to somebody and, hey, I'll pray for you, man. I hear you going through something or, you know, I just had you on my heart. Can we pray? Or, you know, give them a plan of salvation or maybe it's just, you know, being nice to somebody and just taking Jesus every place we go and introducing him to people. I believe that's our role. And um, I hope that you want to do that too. You know, so like I say, haven't totally arrived yet, but man, I'm on the road and I'm having a great time with it. It's getting a whole lot easier. It's getting a whole lot better. I just, uh, sometimes I have to be reminded by him. I'm in the midst of something and he said, you know, you wanted to take me everywhere. I'm here right now. And um, surrender, my spirit will speak through you. He'll give you the words to speak in this situation right now that you don't know what to do. And I yield to that. And he, he does that. He wants to do that in all of our lives. Man. So pray with me, would you? Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the incredible change in the lives that we've seen in the men that um, were hungry for you, Lord. And they they stayed to listen to truth and they they were following you and they wanted to be with you and they wanted to hear from you and they wanted to change their lives totally, give their lives totally to you, Lord. Not just as an answer for forgiving our sins and thank you for doing that, Lord. Not just an answer for meeting all the needs that we have and you do that constantly. But not just for those things, Lord, but for a permanent, constant, relationship with you that we continue to make ourselves aware of. And Lord, we're just gonna choose right now, tonight, tomorrow. We find ourselves in situations and we're kind of beside ourselves or we're starting to get angry or we're confused or we're hurt or we're disappointed or we're let down. Whatever it is, Lord, would you remind us by your Holy Spirit who resides inside of each one of us? Would you remind us that you're walking with us? that Holy Spirit, you're living within us, remind us and we will take a step and just remember you're here and we'll yield to you and allow you to guide us and direct us. In whatever mess we're in, whatever situation's going on, we're going to allow you to be in the midst of that situation just by yielding to you. If you want us to say something or just keep our mouths shut or just to love someone, whatever you want, maybe it's words, maybe it's things, maybe it's not, I don't know. But Lord, we want to yield to you in everything that we do. We surrender that to you this day. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Hey, thanks for being with me today. Uh, try to walk this out with me. Just remembering where Jesus is going everywhere we're going, man. And we can uh, experience his presence if we just choose to do that. Okay? And remember... God loves you. Love him back.